This week's episode of The Grid is sponsored by Impix. Shoot today, upload tonight, we ship tomorrow. On one software, focused on photography. Peach Pit Press, publishers of technology books, ebooks, and videos for creative people. Epson, exceed your vision. Expo Imaging, rogue flash vendors for speedlight enthusiasts. Intel, the power you need for hardcore creatives. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional photography website. And B&H Photo, the professional source. Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another live episode of The Grid, and we are very honored to have one of the greatest photographers in the world, Mr. Joe McNally. Well, Heidi, what do you say after that? I, I, I say that you obviously you've been drinking all afternoon. <laughs> you know, um, no, it's an honor to be here. Thank you. Well, thanks. You know, uh, for those of you who are just joining us, I think Joe still has the most watched episode of The Grid ever. But you know what? We could probably beat it today. If those of you who are just tuning in, this would be a great time to go send out a tweet, go to Facebook, go to Google+, go to wherever those cool kids are going today. Sounds good. And say, hey, we're watching Joe on the grid today. Uh, we have a great show for you. Uh, we're going to be doing blind photo critiques, and Joe's going to be looking at uh, portraits lit with uh, strobes and flash and stuff. But um, before we do that, Joe, uh, you got a, you have a nice cover assignment this week, I see. It was, it was a wonderful assignment. It was a little hectic, but it was wonderful. So Cover Sports Illustrated. Yep, yep. Got the call um, Thursday late, you know, and uh, Friday morning early, you know, we were rolling to Boston to shoot the three officers of the Boston Police Department who were on the cover of the magazine in the aftermath of the Boston Marathon bombing. Mm -hmm. And of course, making that connection now to the resurgence of Boston via the presence of Poppy Ortiz, who basically carried the Red Sox to uh, you know the World Series win. So it was Big Poppy and the three officers, and it was a wonderful, hectic, but wonderful uh, opportunity. So can we bring up the cover and show it here real quick? Or do we already bring up, the there it is. Now this looks like a pretty easy shot to get, Joe. Nice, beautiful, sunny day. Calm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, could you tell us a little? I, I heard this already. I, Joe was telling me ab about it, uh, but I think it's great for for people to hear what goes on behind this. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was uh, not a good day weatherwise. The rain, which thankfully led up, the wind never led up. The wind was kind of kicking us around, kicking us around the outfield at Fenway. Uh, we had about 20 minutes. You know, big. Poppy is like the baseball player of the moment right now. So right. he came in and I kind of played a game with him. He was like, all right, you know, I said, Big Poppy, what are you, what, what you going to give me here? And he's like, uh, 20 minutes. I'm like, all right, you know. So I'd kind of play with him a little bit, and I'd burn a few minutes, and I'd say, okay, we're down to 17 minutes. He goes, no, man, no, 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 we got more. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just kind of played a game with him like that and tried to draw the situation out because your responsibility as a photographer in the field for a magazine like SI is to give the magazine some options. I wrote about it a little bit in my blog today. You, you, you can't just go and shoot one situation from one angle because that puts the magazine in handcuffs. So you want the art director and the creative folks back at the magazine to have a little bit of leeway because you just don't know what's going to happen in the world of weekly magazines. It, things could change on a dime. So I'm out there and I am just pumping like crazy. We are, we are pushing. Or, you know, I did three separate uh, cover uh, treatments, if you will, or, or angles, and then a couple of singles of Big Poppy, and we had them out of there in about 20, 25 minutes. Oh, wow. How'd you light it? Uh, can we see the cover again real quick? Sure. It's it's basically one big source. It's a 74-inch Okta, Ellen Crom Ranger, pumping a fairly big blow of light at them. Easy going light, trying to match the softness of the day, kind of a soupy quality. Uh, and, you know, it just sparked him a little bit. I mean, as you can see, a little bit of a mountain to climb here in the sense you've got a gray day, you've got dark uniforms on the officers. Big Poppy showed up in a black Hugo Boss suit, you know. <laughs> Very like, nice. okay, you thank know. you for your sartorial <laughs> elegance there, sir, but I would have preferred a Red Sox uniform, but it's okay. He showed up and he, thankfully he had that scarf, you know. I styled the scarf for him. I said, okay, Big Poppy, here we go. And I kind of messed around with him a little bit, you know, and then I, 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 I tried to turn his angle. I tried to, I grabbed him by the shoulders and I wanted to turn him into the photograph. It was like, no. All right. You turn yourself, you know, I mean, the, the guy, the dude's a big dude. Yeah, he's a boss. Know? Um, so, uh, but he was, 
he was actually quite congenial. He was honored, legitimately honored, I think, to be photographed with the police officers. And of course, the officers had a ball. Oh, sure. Now, uh, one more thing about the cover here. How did you get that big Sports Illustrated sign behind them? Was it's, it held up? Uh, well, it's, a, um, it's a, a D800 custom menu function. I don't know if anybody... And it just pops it in there? Yeah, it's a, oh, it's, nice. it's a, a, a K11, I think, in K11. the menu, nice. menu, menu bank. All um, right. Well, uh, congratulations on that. That's, a, that's an, an, an awesome image, an awesome opportunity, and thank you for sharing that D800 tip. Yeah. Hey, a uh, couple. Of, I, I want to get right right to the show because we have a lot to cover today. Just a couple of things. Uh, we will talk about my worldwide photo walk because it was we, we announced the winners on Monday, and so. But we're going to get to that later in the show. We'll talk about that then. But I got to talk about one thing because it's our giveaways. Frank Duerhoff's brand new book. We just got our copies yesterday. I don't know if you've seen this yet. Mastering the model shoot. Frank freaking killed it on this book. This is, you can look at this while we're talking about it. Cool. He did, well, I want to give some credit to, to our staff too, because like Jessica Maldonado, the Photoshop girl, she does the layouts in there and she designed the whole thing. And, and Frank was amazing. The team was amazing. Kim and Cindy and everybody that worked on it. There's some people in here who don't have many clothes on. Well, well, Frank does shoot people. Sometimes they don't have as many clothes on as they should, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but they all have some clothes on. <laughs> But uh, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, he, he rocked, rock, Brad, Brad writes, uh, Joe wouldn't know anything about shooting naked people. No, I don't. I remember, I remember you, when you legitimately shot a bunch of athletes naked and did it in a very tasteful way, which is not what's in here. Anyway, uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're going to be giving away a copy of Frank's new book. It's not even in stores yet. It's just getting uh, to stores, to shipping to stores right now. But my hat's off to Frank. He absolutely killed it on this book. He covers things I haven't seen covered anywhere else. He covers the entire process from beginning to end, how to find models, uh, locations, backgrounds. And then he has, of course, a lot on lighting and retouching, how he retouches. I stole some retouching tips from Frank in this book. He's got some great stuff. Anyway, we're giving away Frank's book. We're going to give a one-year uh, uh, membership to Kelby Training online. So you'll be able to watch hundreds and hundreds of classes, including classes from a guy named Joe McNally. And um, we're also going to give away a ticket to any of uh, our one-day seminars. You're on the road with a seminar. We'll talk about that in just a little while. Hey, you mentioned your blog today that you wrote about that uh, cover. Uh, JoeMcNally.com slash blog. So while we're taking a quick break, you can jump over there and check it out. <laughs> Wait, there it is right there. And so uh, that's over at Joe's blog. But uh, hey, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to be doing blind photo critiques of portraits lit with flash or strobes. Stick around. We'll be right back right here live on the grid with our special in-studio guest, Joe McNulty. The gear isn't your trophy. It's the photographs you take. Hey, I'm Zach Arias. Follow me for two days as I shoot street portraits. And then I sit down with a Pulitzer Prize winning photo editor to talk about photography. So check out my class, the $5,000 challenge at kelbytraining.com. Hey everybody, we are back. Scott Kelby here with Mr. Joe McNally. And uh, this segment is brought to you by Wacom, people we dearly love. Not just because they're our sponsor, but that does give us a little extra love. But um, Wacom tablet, I keep one everywhere I go. In fact, I have one in my bag right here. I have the brand new one. They did the, the Intuos Pro line, mm. and uh, I have it with me. It goes with me everywhere I go. Go, go to Wacom.com, and if you do any kind of photography, retouching, well, anything, anything that uses a, a photo, you got to get a Wacom tablet. So go check them out at Wacom.com. Joe, next stop, where can people see you live? Los Angeles? Yeah, next week is Los Angeles. Week after is San Francisco. So uh, on the 13th, I believe, you're in L.A., and then you're in San Francisco on the 18th. And if you haven't seen Joe live, uh, it's, it's, it's boring. I'll just tell you straight up. It's a boring time. It's not... He gets lucky sometimes, other times not so much. It's, it's a weird day, but I mean, if you got nothing else to do. Yeah, well, I'm actually kind of angry at Scott because he gave me this tour and he, he's restricting me to the use of only two lights. 
It but is. I make a deal with the audience, and you know, the last last time I got to four lights, but I, I looked at the audience. I said, "Look, none of that has to go outside of these walls." It just right? did, though. Yeah, yeah, but it just did. You know, but no, it's a one light, two light tour. We have basically, you know, a lot of fun all day long working with really minimal gear, really simple techniques to get sophisticated light from sort of next to nothing. And that's what's great about it. I kid you not, I'll be like in the middle of my day and my, my phone will buzz and it's somebody, like one of my friends at your seminar and they're going, Joe is killing it. I mean, people write rave reviews, they're texting me rave re reviews. But this tour has been a, a massive hit. And and I think that the fact that you're keeping it simple, just one or two flashes, because you, you're sitting there going like, wow, I've got two flashes. You know, I, I can kind of do this stuff. Yep. So um, anyway, go check him out. He's going to be in, in L.A. and in uh, San Francisco. And we're giving away a ticket, of course. Uh, at the end of the show, we'll, we'll be giving away a ticket, and you can choose whichever city you want, either L.A. Uh, I'll be in New York City this Thursday. So uh, if you want to come to uh, New York, come and join me. Uh, and uh, let's see what else. We're gonna, I'm going to be in San Diego on December 3rd and Toronto, Canada on December uh, 9th. December something. Hold on. <laughs> on December 9th. Yes, December 9th. And uh, Matt Klaskowski is in the 15th of this month. He's in Sacramento with his Lightroom tour, then on to Seattle, and then on December 13th, Jacksonville, Florida. We're giving away more stuff today, too. Look, Joe's book, The Moment It Clicks. Will you sign it for the winner? Absolutely. All Happy right. To. So we got Frank's book. We got Joe's book. We got Joe's other book, Sketching with Light. We got giveaways galore. Look at the way that camera zoomed in on that. Was it? Is it that one? That well, the, the camera impressive. loves Donald. Cameron, that's my friend Donald Blake, who is one of the gentlemen of all time. Just a wonderful guy. He's posed for what so a great many character. Oh yeah, he's posed for so many lighting classes at Santa Fe. He knows more about lighting than a lot of photographers. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. All right, that's probably true. Hey, also RC is in Calgary, so RC is with the Photoshop Photographer Tour in Calgary, and but I think that's in December, right? We'll find out. Okay. Uh, it's okay that you're not remembering this stuff, Scott, because you, you are getting a little bit older. I know. Now. I know. It's, so. that's not good. It's all right. All right. Hey, but you know what? It's, it's like my wife says. It beats the alternative. Yeah, no, it's true. <laughs> you stop getting older, things get bad. Uh, RC is in uh, Calgary on December 11th. So uh, go to kelbytraining.com, uh, click on seminars, or just kelbytraininglive.com, and it'll take you right there. Okay. Hey, uh, we're going to look at some images. So we've asked photographers, Joe, to send in images, but we said, send us portraits that are lit with either hot shoe flash, strobe, not natural light stuff, but all, you know, lit stuff. Because, I mean, you're, you're the, as I say in my tour, when I describe you, I call you the magical unicorn of lighting. So uh, I thought this would be a great opportunity for them to, to get the bottom line on lighting to look at their images. Okay. So uh, we have, uh, say, uh, about 15, 20 photographers. We'll get through as many as we can. Sounds good. And uh, how do you like to do it? Do you want to look through them all first and then go back, or do you want to just... Why don't we take them in turn? What do you think? Right. Okay, here we go. Let's start with the first one. So here's the first image. And uh, these, these are supposed to be blind critiques, but of course, if you put your watermark on it, we, we know who you are. <laughs> All right, so um, here's one. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's obviously a very simple light treatment. Looks to me, you know, uh, you know uh, as a, a one light type of a thing. Looks like, you know, light is slightly camera right, uh, fairly, you know, distinct sort of light frames the face, falls into shadow quite rapidly, which is, I think, where the problems start uh, with the photograph. If you, you know, uh, again, you know, I'm, I'm critiquing these blind. This is my opinion, my opinion only. When I'm looking at the picture, I start to lose her hair. I think the crop on the top is a little... Um, judgmental. It's a little harsh, uh, you know, cropping at the edges of somebody like the very tip of their head or the very tip of their fingers tends to me anyway, feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. If you're going to crop, crop, I mean, go for it. I mean, like, let it be obvious, you know, it's a natural, you cut know. the arm in, right in half or something <laughs> like that. Or, or if you're going to do a horizontal portrait, crop right at the forehead, you know, right. really bore in on the eyes here. The crop is sort of neither here nor there. It's right into her, her, the, the part in her hair and the hair, that line creates a, a bit of a, 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 you know, just a little blip in my eye that draws me upwards and away from the attention that should be down at her face. And of course, she's uh, a double ampu amputee. And yes, missing, missing a couple of things there. And wardrobe wise, you know, um, busy, right? One of the things I counsel my subjects, you know, if they say, well, what should I wear? I always 
argue for, unless the point of the picture is the garment or something like right. that, I, I say keep it simple. Strong, simple primary colors. Things that are not going to compete for visual attention with your face. Here, she's kind of looks like she's got kind of a pretty good tan going on. The colors of her face, her hair are kind of muted, whereas the activity, the graphic activity of the photograph is down at the dress. So I find myself, you know, just going like this, you know, and, and, and tipping down towards her dress, her chest, her waist, all that sort of stuff, like, and I don't come back up because there's not enough vibrancy to the light. So, you know, basically a decent light treatment, but it starts to um, fall a little flat at the edges and whatnot. You know, you need a little more dimension to the lighting treatment that you're going to give this particular lady. All right, we'll take a look at a couple of more. We, we won't necessarily get to spend as much time on the other ones, but here we go. Okay. Same photographer. Looks like same model. Same model. Yeah, same model. Looks like pretty much the same light. Uh, you know, uh, light is camera right. Uh, you know, there's more uh, more information in this picture. I mean, you can see the long, it looks like a hallway, you know, heading to the background. Still not enough information, though. That looks like the shutter drag for that hallway or lobby or whatever it is should be longer and slower to kind of burn in some detail. That could be a problem though, because it looks like she might be in an atrium. So when you start to drag your shutter, you're starting to compete with the quality of available light. The quality, the available light bleeds into your flash solution and destroys the effect and feel of your flash, or at the very least softens it up. The, uh, I think the foreground is a little hot, you know, yeah. the, the tile and whatnot. And right down here. Yeah, it, it just, the overall setting to me, doesn't feel that attractive. This is a very attractive young lady, to be sure. And I would try to, again, there, there's a somber quality to the light. It just kind of falls on her. And I would love to see those eyes. Her eyes look really quite beautiful from this distance. So I'd love a spark into her eyes, maybe a little bit of a underplayed ring flash, maybe a little bit of on-axis fill, or even a floor skip, you know, off a, off a little bit of a metallic surface, some sort of fill bounce to spark those eyes. To spark eyes. those eyes. I'll, I'll give a, a, a different critique since you're doing the lighting. Uh, her foot, in relationship to the size of her head, looks gigantic. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's lens selection and then it was cropped because I got a feeling it was. Uh, but that's that's a huge looking foot there, buddy. That's and I don't think her foot is that big. Also, retouching wise, uh, this this all needs retouching. It's just there's all kinds of splotchy skin. You have red skin here and all kinds of other crazy stuff. But we'll we'll move on. Yowza. Uh, well, you're gonna have to help me out with this one, Scott, because I think you know my my uncertainty with post production leads me to to think, think it's over sharpened. It's a to little death. crunchy, right? It's crunchy, baby. Yeah, it's just it's it's way over processed. You know, uh, lighting wise, uh, any comments? Well, you know, it's dramatic. I mean, it, he's definitely got two light sources going. The snake is lit from below. There's a kind of a clipping hey, highlight to hey, camera. Hey, Joe, there's a sentence you don't hear every day. The snake is lit from below. Yeah, no, <laughs> a little beauty light for the snake. Um, there's this clipping highlight kind of coming in from camera left. And it also looks like, you know, is there... I'm going to stick with two lights. It seems like that. There yeah. might be something high to right, but I don't think so. Yeah. It looks like the snake is being lit this way, and then what's jumping over the snake is hitting his forehead, his, his forehead over his left eye. Yeah. And so potentially a, a very dramatic and powerful combination to the light. I think, again, the crop on the hand is a little vicious. Yep, it is. You know, and the... You know, he's kind of painted this kind of, you know, sort of cool color. It's funny that you mentioned that because that doesn't look like a the right ratio, right? It looks like it's been cropped thinner than the actual camera ratio would be the aspect ratio of the, of the frame. It does. So he is overly aggressively cropping. All right. And I don't want to spend too... We have so many images to look at. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time here. But uh, so if you had to... I'll show you the last image. If you had to give this photographer one piece of advice on, on what they need to do to help improve their lighting, what, what do you think it might be? Well, again, uh, not to go deeply into critique of this particular image that is up right now, but it shares the same faults, if you will, of a lack of background detail. I mean, there's this one burning light back there, but it's lighting nothing. It's just a big kind of blown to, out highlight. To draw and, your eye and, to nothing. And what am I looking at? Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of separation. There, I mean, there is because she's wearing a white shirt. But again, the light is, um, is dropping on her in a not a particularly... Uh, lively way, you know. It's one thing to light subtly, but when she's a small piece of the frame like this and you've got surrounding her 
with darkness. Yeah. You know, that, that is a problem for my eye. Yeah, and you're lighting the floor down here. Yep, yep, you are. You are. So, so overall, what would you tell this photographer? You need to, to make your shots better, you would... Start to spend some time dealing with your background. Your foreground solution is kind of sort of getting there, you know, I mean, eh, but you've got to give me more information. You've got to excite my eye. Remember always, always, you've got three zones to a photograph, foreground, middle ground, background. You're responsible for all three. And sometimes I find myself, even if I'm in a cavern or a warehouse, I'll light a wall that's 30 yards away. I've seen you do that many times, yeah. You know, just to create a little visual interest to draw your eye, give your viewers something to chew on throughout the entire frame. Very good. Thank you, Joe. Sure. All right, so let's look at the next one here. Okay. All right, cool. Um, I have no idea who did this one since there's no watermark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Avanti by Kiefer, cool. I'm going to take you through the whole set real let's, quick. Let's, here. let's take a look, look at the whole set. Yep. That's, uh, she's falling. All right, that's the set right there. Okay. So, all right. Overall all right. thoughts? Well, I think, you know, pretty good command and control of tools. You know, I'd, I'd love to know a little bit more, which we cannot right now. Are these commissions? Are they portfolio shots? Are they friends who, you know, come into the studio? I'll shoot you in a, in a kind of a fun gown or something like that. I think, you know, the lighting in this, you know, there's not a great deal of what I would say an overt problem. I mean, it's a studio shot. She's lit pretty well. There's a little bit of separation on her shoulder. You know, you've got the, the, the shadow, you know, obviously main light to camera left and a bit of a glimmer off to camera right. Uh, the the banner, you know, dropping the name and the banner is honestly a little bit of a problem for me because mm -hmm. it kind of crops into some valuable real estate of the photograph. I my personal preference would be to lose that. Oh yeah, the watermarks. You know, I notice uh, you don't watermark your stuff, Jeff. I don't. No. Yeah, and aren't you worried about getting your images stolen? I know it's going to happen as we speak. <laughs> as we speak. So it's, an, as, as, it's a thing I stopped worrying about a long time ago. Oh, yeah. And people ask me, they go, why don't you watermark your images? And I'm going, aren't you worried about to get them stolen? I said, I'm not worried about them being stolen. I'm just hoping that the people that steal them are like Exxon, Walmart, <laughs> somebody really, really big. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. So, um, Okay, again, the, um, the banner here is, uh, you know, looks like a graphic element of the photograph. So yeah. let's get past that. Okay, yeah, the, um, the, the, the watermarks yeah. are killing these, but... Uh. You know, it looks like gray paper seamless. And when you're lighting gray paper like that, you have to be careful. You see the ripples back there? Mm -hmm. You know, I would minimize my depth of field you know, on, on a picture like this and make sure that gray just goes to a very kind of out of focus, hazy gray. Yeah. Because right now it's got some detail and it's troublesome. Yeah, like, it like, like draws your eye a little I'm gonna bring bit. it up a little. I, I don't know if I can get it any larger here. Yeah. But yeah, you're seeing all this stuff, the bends in the paper, a little folds, a little in, you know, uh, right. stuff. Now, overall light, not bad. Looks like a one light that she's looking up and into. It looks pretty much, overhead, maybe slightly to the right, there's a shadow fall that's very graceful on her right cheek, which is good. And um, she is... Uh, Sorry. Sorry. What? I was taking the cursor going up her nose. Sorry. Okay. Just very childish. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> I, I think the pose is a little awkward, you know, taking her and kind of doing that duck thing where yeah, the her elbow elbows thing, come yeah. forward. Some models do that really well. Mick Jagger does it great. Yeah, no, that's true. He does. Um, some models can kind of pull that off. I don't think this particular young lady is a candidate for that type of pose. I would, you know, kind of work with her to have a more pleasing, maybe slenderizing kind of a pose, that type of thing, or a little more graphically pleasing, that type of thing. Slenderizing? Was that uh, a right thing That's to say? That's a word, kind of slenderizing. Yeah, yeah. was yeah. that, a, was that, It I goes offend? great on me. Did I offend anyone by no, saying no, that? No, 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 no. I mean, no, I, I think, just, I don't think, it, I think it's a, a McNally word, you know, slenderizing. You, you just kind of have to let somebody be more, a bit more graceful instead of kind of forcing their arms into this. There also looks like a secondary light source. You see the, yep. the, uh, the light on the, on her right elbow there. It looks like there's something, which is, is a good thing to do because she's got great hair. I mean, the, she's got this, wow this curly kind of wonderful hair so he's the photographer's obviously trying to put a little bit of of glimmer in that hair to the right hand side right. and it is on her elbow also a good strategy definitely a good strategy so there probably is three lights in this picture 
You know, all of them are handled relatively well. Yeah, minor, and you got one in the background, things, right? You got one uh, up. Looks like for the reflections in her eyes, perhaps coming from up here. Main light, and, and then this one over here, a little kicker on the side. Yep, yep. This one's going to be hard to look at. Well, I, th I think this actually should be turned a, a different direction, Joe. I, I, I just feel like it. And yeah. I, I obviously cannot remember. It's the bridge, so I can't remember the trying to... keyboard shortcut to actually rotate it. Uh, here we go. It's, it's Apple G. There you go. Um, <laughs> um. <laughs> Apple G. <laughs> That's a rapper's name, right? Uh, Apple G. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Um, wow, the, 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 the garment's kind of wild. I mean, in terms of a classic beauty light, it's pretty nicely done. You can see the catch lights. There's an overhead and mm -hmm. underhead, classic clamshell pattern. Uh, you know, she's got like, man, she's got earrings and a half here going on. And, and that's, you know, it's... It all kind of runs together. I didn't even it, realize she had earrings on. Yeah, that earring is I'm kind of... I'm drawn by that eye at the bottom there. Yeah, I mean, the earring is kind of resting on the fur of the animal that she's wearing. Or, um, and, yeah, I mean... Let's move on, Joe. Yeah, you know... <laughs> Here we go. Okay, here's another uh, beauty light. Yep. Simple, clean beauty light, nice white background, nicely done. Simple, clean. Boom. Okay, sweet little girl. Um, hula hoop and kind of princess costume i don't know what the deal is in the background it looks like maybe a carnival horse yeah it looks something. like the whole thing looks a little circus -y. look at the hat she's wearing and you know yep and see? and circus great thing. graceful i mean you could speak to the photoshop elements here i think the light is uh is sweet and soft so if what you meant by the photoshop elements was like extreme over retouching is, is that your is that your way of <laughs> you know i'm gonna you know i stay loose on that because i you know obviously i don't I, it's not what I do. It's not what not what I know about so much. So I will defer to you. Yeah, it's Obi Wan. Yeah. That's it, it's just it's just you know her face is way way over retouched. It's okay. just there's just a ton. And you know with, with kids, you know their their skin's usually pretty okay. What they, what they were probably battling was splotchy skin. Uh, kids will will often have you know like a red splotch or something on their face, and then you're right. you're just gonna. But this is just like if if, if your retouching can go from one to ten, this is ten. Okay. All right. Um, and they didn't. You can't really see her eyes. So, and that's obviously something we could do in post. Uh, I'd prefer to do it, you know, on the set. But you could you could certainly do it in post. Mm -hmm. uh, overall, it's like you say, it's cute, sweet girl, cute shot. Yeah, a little. I mean. Maybe kind of the light is, I don't know if this is the right thing to say or not, but the light feels a little mature for a kid. Oh, okay. You know, kind of like, you know, with a little kid, you maybe want like poppier, happier light. Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of cool and sort of very reserved light. That's just a gut call on my part. Well, Joe, it's time for a break. All right, awesome. When we come back, we'll be crushing the hopes and dreams of more aspiring photographers with Joe McNally, the Crush Meister. <laughs> I'm just trying to make you feel bad, Joe, but don't. I'm sure this person will find a job someplace else. Anyway, hey, we'll take a short break. When we come back, uh, more, more critiques with Joe McNally right here live on The Grid. Don't go away. Hey, we are back. Scott Kelby here with Joe McNally. Man, these commercial breaks are quick. I mean, they are quick, you know. Uh, hey, uh, just a couple of things. Uh, on Monday, I announced the winners of my sixth annual Worldwide Photo Walk. We had tens of thousands of people walking all over the world on October 5th, I believe it was. And so if you go to my blog at scottkelby.com on Monday, you will see the list of the winners. Uh, the 10 honorable mentions and winners, and we, have, we had incredible prizes. Like the first prize was like $17,000 worth of gear. I mean, uh, Canon was the sponsor and they gave away just incredible prizes. 70D, really nice lens. Uh, all the finalists got uh, printers. And, I mean, they, they did a really nice job. And we had all kinds of stuff from, uh, from Adobe giving like a full year of the creative suite to Wacom and all. So 
on Tuesday, uh, I always go back after the, the winners and just pick other images that were in the running. And so if you click on Tuesday's post, you'll see a lot of these images. Now we did a video, we did actually, a, a RC Matt and I did a video at the top there where we go through and explain why each image was, was chosen and we talk quite a bit about it. And, uh, and that, that's, you know, when you've got a little more time. But if you just want to look and see the honorable mentions, you can see them as well on Tuesday. So congratulations to everybody. We still have the People's Choice Award and some more stuff coming up. Hey, this segment also of The Grid is brought to you by MPix. MPix is an online photo lab, which I dearly love. Go to MPix.com. If you take your image, drag and drop it onto their website, you know, open an account, all that, of course. Drag it and drop it on their website by 11 a.m. in the morning, you get a nice big print back the next day. Even if you ask for a four by six, they still send you. No, I'm just kidding. You get to choose. <laughs> Joe looks at me like, really? No, no, no. You got to, uh, you get to choose what size print you want, but they make up to like 20 by 30s. They make, and they do a beautiful job. So uh, cool. go check them out at mpix.com. And thanks to them for making this segment and the show available to you. Richard D uh, is chiming in uh, over there on the live feed. He says, we need McNally and Hurley at the same time critiquing photos of people. You know, that would be great uh, because uh, uh, Hurley is really about the expression. Oh, I yeah. mean, he's really about about the expression. He's like, yeah, the lighting, whatever. He's, you know, though, though I love the way he lights. I mean, he lights, he lights the same, everybody the same, but man, has he got that look down. Man, he, I got in front of his camera and I had never experienced that before. Like the attention to detail. And of course it comes from his background as a model. Right. You know, and he's like, okay, um, make your lower eyelids closer to your pupils. I'm like, what? what? And, Click. And then he's got you, you know, and then he'll be there and he'll be messing with you. He'll go, okay, um, flex your knuckles. And you're like, huh? And boom, he's got you, you know? He's got this kind of way of engaging at the camera he does. that is, you know, he pulls it out of you. And you don't even realize it's happening. By the end of it, you've been laughing so hard, you're not even realizing that you just got photographed, you know? It was great. He's, and, he's you know, I'm, I'm, uh, we're doing a book with him, and I'm the editor on his book. And so he and I are sitting together, and we're, we have a bonus chapter of all that crazy stuff that he says. Oh, nice. Dude, it's so funny. I'm, I'm sitting there, we're talking, we're, we're going through the pro and he's telling me some of the things. I'm in tears. I mean, I'm laughing so hard I can't even think. So it's, it's you, you were very very lucky to be able to, to see, because his whole thing is how he interacts. Mm -hmm. So you with the lighting and Hurley with the motion would be, would be unbelievable. I, I agree with, uh, with, the, with the reader. All right, let's take a look at... Uh, Add some shots here. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let me go through this set yeah, real quick and we'll see. Through. And uh, you can give us your overall. All right, overall. Oh. Nicely done. Uh, good yeah. Set, good sense of stylistic continuum. You know, I do, uh, I do always appreciate a photographer who returns to a certain theme or style where you strip out the incidental elements of a photograph. You you go to the core of what's important, which is the face, hopefully a bit of the soul of a subject. These portraits are simplicity themselves, but they're a very effective simplicity. You know, it communicates. It communicates very, very well. It does. How do you like the lighting? I think the lighting's simple, clean. It's The lighting is exactly what it should be. In this instance, it stands in service to the subjects. It doesn't overwhelm them, it complements them. Like this light, you know, he's obviously moving the light because the light here for this gentleman mm -hmm. is off to the yep. side more so than the, with the female models up front. Yeah. But this guy needs a light to the side because his arms, kind of the, the cragginess of his face, yeah. all that sort of stuff, come out with a more angled light. Whereas like the first uh, uh, lady, and you know, she gets a more frontal treatment, a little softer treatment, because I make no bones about it. There's feminine light and there's masculine light, and those are two good examples. And it, all it is, I don't even think it's necessarily that much of a different light. It's a different position. The the position of the light or the subject relative to the light can be as much as a few inches of variance, and will speak volumes in, oh, yeah. in your photograph. And look at the nice fall off in the light here. Mm -hmm. Look at the fall off. Yep. Look at the fall off on him. Exactly. A and, lot and of control. Yeah, by fall off, we're talking about his face is brighter, and then it should naturally. Your eye is drawn to the brightest thing, so it, mm -hmm. if, if it's a portrait of somebody, their face is, and then it, mm -hmm. it falls off. And I think they did a really nice job with the fall off. You know what he's done in these last two? If we could go back to just that other one. There's also a, a powerful graphic sort of hidden in this photograph. If your eye follows the line of his lower arm, and you see the way his knuckles and everything, it starts to edge up into his upper right arm and then it comes around to his face it all complements there's a circle that is is keeping you graphically enjoying the photograph 
within the overall photograph. You've got no place else to go. So it is a wonderful thing. And he repeats it in the next picture, again with the arms. I have to assume this guy is perhaps a painter or, you know, he's got uh, this very simple uh, pose. You know, I mean, the propping is minimal. There's a chair on the set. But the, um, the part of the story is the is the paint or the colors on the arms and the way those fingers come in to the face and boom, you're there at his eyes. I think the, the, the emotions and expressions he got out of these uh, subjects are terrific. Mm -hmm. And I want to add just one thing. I love his post-processing. Okay. Or her post-processing. I'm not sure who it is. But um, I think the post-processing is, it's, it's subtle, mm -hmm. but it's definitely there. And, and I think it's, I think it's very nicely done. I think as far as the post work goes, it's great. And, you know, of course, you, you spoke to the lighting, which I think is wonderful. I love the, I think he picked five really good shots. Yes. You know, it's like, I think they're, I love the, each expression. Because here's a cute girl, mm -hmm. but we saw cute girls earlier. Right, right. But her expression is that whole different level. Yes, yes. I mean, and it speaks in, to another issue, which he's obviously he's executing well, he's engaging his subjects. The subjects yes. are quite obviously comfortable with him or her. And so there's a relationship there at the camera. And the photographer here in question is not forgetting that crucial mission of, yes, my lighting, my staging, all that sort of stuff. But there's a human being out there. I have to remember that. I have to project. I have to make them feel good, feel confident. These five subjects look very confident in front of the camera. Yeah, they do. You know, and that is a very vulnerable place yeah, to be. And she is in a kind of a, a, she still has a confidence in her eyes, even though her pose is, is not a, what you wouldn't call to be a confident pose, where his looks like a very confident pose, but she still looks, has a confident look to her. That was a great observation. Mm -hmm. You could do this for a living. Okay. Um, the photographer is a she, not a he. Hey, my hat's off to her. Uh, who, whoever she is, uh, terrific job. Nice job. Really, nice really job. just good set of pictures. Great, great set of pictures. So I love that. Just I like their style. I love the post and everything. All right, let's take a look at uh, what we have here. Okay. I'll go through all five real quick, Joe. Yeah, sounds good. And uh, that looks painful. I do this in the morning when I first get up. But. Okay. Um. Strong and simple, it looks like, you know, a photographer engages dancers, which are, you know, some of my favorite subjects for sure. Uh, feels like the highlight on the background is a little misplaced, you know, it looks heavier to camera left than maybe it should be. You know, the highlight should maybe be a little bit more centered behind her head. Um, the address of the light to her, I think, is fine. It's nice. It's, it's simple. It's clean. Mm -hmm. And she, she's doing a great job projecting her confidence, her presence as a young dancer. This is not as successful to me. The, the light is seriously off to the side. And I think in this particular instance, I would like her shadow side of her face to be more filled. I'd like a little more detail or glimmer in her hair. I'd love to get some sense of the garment. And uh, Yeah, it just goes to solid black. And hey, I think you didn't have the quote of the week there, though. What's I that? think the quote of the week is, this is not, ex not as successful as we'd like it to be. <laughs> I think that was, I want to go back and rewind that. That was the quote of the week because I thought that was very well played. Well, uh, it's a phrase I've heard quite often when I've turned <laughs> oh, in my work, Scott. Yeah, I'm sure. Hey, uh, you know, so... Well, what uh, happens there, though, you see the brightest area of the picture is mm -hmm. in the background. My eye jumps. You're right. Jumps my, my eye is jumping too much. So uh, we don't have time to go through every single one, but overall, if you had to give this photographer some advice to, on how to prove their lighting or they're just their portraits in general, what advice would that be? I think I, I, would, I would simply work with... I mean, the, the basic command of tools is good. S details details. You know, uh, you've, you've got a, a good array of subjects. You've got a good command of your tools. I would just pay more attention to the details of the photograph. Something like this is a lovely kind of headshot. You know, it's Yearbook fine. picture? Yearbook kind of picture, exactly. And there also looks like, you know, the connection, emotional connection. Uh, I'm not feeling a tremendous, I feel like these people are just floating in front of the lens. They're being relatively nicely treated. I would love to see 
and this is a kind of an ineffable quality. It's hard to describe. I would like to see more uh, emotion from the photographer involved in these portraits. It looks like he's making more of a record picture, a pleasing portrait that's bordering on snapshot as opposed to an insightful portrait. Very good. Thank you, Joe. Uh, next, let's look at uh, this one right here. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to bring these a little bigger for our viewers. Wow, when you make it bigger, it just kind of goes off into nowhere land. I guess I'll have to make them a little smaller. Okay. So what's interesting is I'll, I'd be interested to see what you say differently about this one than one we just looked at. Well, I mean, this is straight up commercial work, looks like to me. Looks like he, he or she was commissioned to do a series of headshots for, I don't know, a law firm or a you know, some sort of uh, insurance company or whatever it might be. And he, uh, he's working on a backdrop. Doesn't look like much is changing. Uh, fairly well executed in the sense that he's got, like this lady's got very big glasses, you know, and he's handling that well with his lights, he or she yeah. again, you know, the photographer. And in terms of a corporate brochure running like headshots next to a little bio, we're good. Question is, I think for this photographer is, Let's get the skill set off the backdrop. Let's find something a little more vibrant to address. Let's find something that's a little more a piece of your soul that is not just straight up commercial work. I don't denigrate this at all. You have yeah. to know how to do this sure. because this photographer is obviously doing this for money. And I'm a big fan of making money right. with your photography. What do you do to this shot? So, Joe, you, you, you're, you're here and you've, you brought a pop-up backdrop and this is, this is your first subject. What are you going to do to get a more compelling shot? I'm, I'm not I'm meaning to put you on the spot by this, but I, I think that that's what that you just said. Well, you know, it's fine for a little photo next to a bio on a website. Mm -hmm. That's not great. That's not like, hey, good job. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like, well, you know, yeah, made a few bucks. And no, I'm, well, I stopped short of being effusive because the work is serviceable. You know, it's it's going to. I'm sure the client. Here's the here's the great thing about it. I'm sure the client was pleased. And you have to know how to please the client. If you want to make a more interpretive portrait of this gentleman who has a pretty interesting face, yeah, I would light it less broadly. I would in, introduce a little more mystery to it. I would, I would a have, more shadow. have some shadows that would define the, the volume and dimensionality of the face. I would uh, try to to do my best in this instance too, if there was time. And of course, I'm talking like an editor. I have the ability to Monday morning quarterback here get them off the backdrop for another session or another setting. Uh, I, I know nothing about him. I know he's a pleasant, has a pleasant smile. That's as far as the photograph goes. It's not interpretive at all. It's, it's, he's documenting, it's a record. It's, it's a relatively competent record. You worked here on this day. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. And I would like to, I would like him to, to play with this a little bit more and give me something that's more beautiful. Oh, very good. All right, here we go. I'm gonna take you through all of them um, real quick. And okay. Diva Ra. Okay. All right, so overall thoughts? Overall, uh, again, you know, uh, um, a, a very reasonable set of portraits, uh, pretty nicely done. This uh, young girl uh, uh, here, a young lady, is up against, uh, you know, a pretty pleasing backdrop. I probably would not have chosen to light her from camera left with that plywood over the window there is the highlight of the whole thing. And you're basically lighting it. So you're, my eye goes there because she is a relatively small piece of the frame. So I would probably take that down a little bit and draw some more attention to my subject because she's dressed in fairly muted clothes. To me, this screams to get closer. I mean, look at the quality of her hair. You know what the, one of the most beautiful things to me about the picture is the synchronicity of the color of her hair and some of the uh, color yeah, the of, tones the, of, the, the, uh, of the wood working yeah. there, whatever it might be. That to me feels pretty good. But in terms of uh, very subtle lighting, I think she's a little too small in the frame for me to grab onto. You know, uh, she looks like a lovely person. I would love to see her closer and isolate, get rid of that window. You know, you've got a beautiful graphic with all those shingles, all those busted up shingles. Right. Go for it. All right, overall, um, without going through each individual image. Uh, um, pretty, you know, overall pretty competent, you know. Uh, 
subject matter. There again, there's details here. The blonde lady with the elbow, you know, uh, and, and a little bit of highlight back there. On the last portrait in the upper right, there's a blown out highlight. In the next one, next one, there. You see the blown out highlight in the upper right? She is actually lit to the same tonality as the greenery in the background. And so that, my eye just automatically goes up there, especially because I haven't got her eyes to look at. She's looking down, very sultry. Oh, yeah, if, good point. If you're, if you're going for this, again, she looks like she's got great facial structure and the tonalities of the background could speak to me, anyway, to doing a tighter portrait. You yeah. Know, a bit tighter. So. so I think the framing in these is a little loose. I would go, uh, I, would, I would push the camera here. I would, I would be more confident with the camera perhaps and push in tighter and try to render my subjects as a more dominant piece of the puzzle. Yeah, this looks better already. You know, I mean, she's a, looks like a lovely, you know, face, great kind of tonality in the cheeks Cheek and all that sort there. of stuff. I mean, go for that face, man, and great hair and all that sort of stuff. Maybe a little fillboard, a little, again, this could be a, a wonderful solution for a, a bit of a beauty light. You know, and, you know, snapping those eyes, seeing, meeting her a little bit more. There's a distance here that is precluding me from really, really getting involved Connecting, with these people. Yeah. You know? So overall, what would you say to this photographer to make your lighting a little bit better? Is it... Uh... Yeah, I would, I would work the light like the diva, the lady who's painted. I mean, kind of Keith Haring, you know, kind of, uh, you know, modernized here. There's nothing in her eyes. You know, all the whiteness is around on her skin. I've got no problem with body paint. I think it's really cool. But she's looking... Uh, you know, I'd love to have more contact with her eyes and have her up into the camera and her just a little more sparked in that in that area. All righty, good. Let's but overall, ni you know, nice job. Nice job. We're seeing some pretty good work. Yeah, we are. You know? Yeah. Um, okay. That's one. That's one. There you go. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, Comments, Joe? Thoughts? Inconclusive. Uh, the lighting is not, um, it's not virtuoso lighting. It's, it's, it's pretty good, you know, simple. But, like, is this guy, the guy previous, is he a rock climber? I see Petzl on the helmet and stuff like that. Is he a rock climber? I guess story. I always, I, especially with horizontal portraits, you know, if you're going to do a headshot on Gray Seamless, not always, you know, nothing, you don't, you don't do anything always, but I would come in and do a headshot, right? Cause that speaks to, you know, the nature of, we're looking at nothing else. There's no environment. There's no other information except the face. Now this per person has a, uh, a horizontal frame. Obviously they're engaged in something. I would love to know what that is. I would, I would take this treatment and try it with, you know, the rocks in the background or whatever, you know, if he's a, if he's a lineman, you know, or, uh, you know, some sort of editorial information For the could, be, could be, could be kind of Glenn Campbell. <laughs> you know that one? That's really old, oh, Joe. Oh, that's really old. I am a lineman for the county, <laughs> and I drive the, the main, main road. road. All right, sorry. Um, <laughs> okay. This is kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, pretty. Uh, graphic, you know, kind of, you know, torque. And, and she's got some rocks behind her, looks like there. <laughs> looks like this this person um, is uh, is a rock climber. To me, is that, am I just going crazy here? I don't know. It looks yeah. like a Denver Valley of the Gods back there, doesn't it? Yeah, kind of kind of that, you know. So there's some, there's some rock formation. So I now have more information. I've got gesture. I've got gesture. I guess that's also part of what I'm um, saying about the last couple of portfolios mm -hmm. as well, is that the subject floating out there in the frame, the gesture diminishes. You're always looking for information and the, and the power of gesture. This has got some tension, some dynamic to it, the cross over the arms, the stretching, all that stuff, kind of cool. All right, cool. And uh, I like this one. Okay. Uh, I'm having a hard time seeing what's on the right-hand side of the frame, though. It's like a reflection in maybe a car or something. Let's see if we can just pull that up and see, Joe. Uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, so there's a plane. Okay, she's up against the side of a plane, mm -hmm. looks like, and there's the prop behind her. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know. Would your guess be that the photographer burned that area down? I don't know. I, th I think that it could use some posts. I think that bringing that out uh, is, makes it more interesting. It also brings out detail in her hair, yep. detail in her outfit. 
Uh, I think you just need a little bit, little bit uh, more post there. I, I do too. I think it's a much more informative picture when the reflection is there. Yeah. I did not. It just looked like a black wall, and you're taking a third of your possible information and basically throwing it away, because in the original rendition, that area of the photograph was completely dark. Her hair blended into it, right. and now I can see. Okay, I've got more yeah, to deal with here. There's the original. Yep. Versus fixing it there. There's that's the original. Yeah, I that's would. It's really dark. That would be my suggestion. Would be to include that information. You know, it's a big part of your frame. Play with it. Do something with it. Yeah, it's part of the story. Yep. Now, Man, is, that, I, is this a mime? It could be a mime or, or a clown. It could be a clown. Yeah. You know, obviously in some sort of circus environment with that graphic behind him. I really want to like this page. I mean, it's there's nothing wrong with the light. It's a it's a decent light from camera right. Um, graphically, the background though. I would have to hope that there's a some other way to array it. Maybe maybe putting him right in the middle of that mouth that's painted, you know. And again, I'm I'm quarterbacking here after the fact. I don't know if the photographer could push left or not. I'm not sure of that. But it feels like I want to see more of this mural, this graphic. I think that I think there's the beginnings of a cool photograph here. Absolutely. But you're truncating the other kind of information right. that might be available to me and the graphic power thereof. All right, and cute picture of a dog. Cute picture of a dog. All right. Okay, hey, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we got a couple more that we're going to look at today. And uh, don't go away. We're live here with Joe McNally. We're doing blind photo critiques of portrait work and dogs here on the grid. Don't go away. And dogs. <laughs> Need a little boost? Then fill up on fuel. Packed with practical tools and tips that will help you quickly advance your creative skills, these short ebooks get right to the heart of what you need to learn. Learn to shoot breathtaking nature photography, teach yourself game design, or impress your friends with the rock and design of your new website. Written by top authors and trainers, Fuelbooks offers friendly, straightforward instruction and innovative ideas to power your creativity. Starting at just $5, every Fuelbook comes in three formats, Mobi, EPUB, and an elegantly laid out PDF, so you can choose the reading experience that works best for you on whatever device you choose. Fuelbooks, designed to inspire you. Hey, we are back. Uh, Scott Kelby here with Joe McNally. This segment is brought to you by B&H Photo. So uh, go to bnhphoto.com. Uh, they've got everything in the world you could ever want for, for photography or for video or for just about anything electronic at all. Uh, I was just up there for their 40th anniversary. So they've been in business 40 years. They had a big party, and I went, and it was, it was great. It was really... Uh, uh, they're great people. The, the people, the service is great. In fact, um, if you go um, on my Twitter account, go to at Scott Kelby, uh, b &H tweeted a video that I made for them for their 40th anniversary. And it tells the story of how I became a B&H customer for life before they ever knew who I was. So now, we, of course, we, we're, we're, they're sponsoring our show. We're great friends with B&H, but it tells the story of how I, I wound up being a B&H customer in the in old days. Anyway, thanks very much to B&H, and, and check them out. Hey, also, Joe, you've got a class running right now. It is a class on using small flash. Uh, we run a free class every week at kelbytraining.com, and the idea is you'll go watch this class from Joe, and you're going to go, Wow, I would learn. To, I would love to learn more from him. And there's all these other classes that that Joe has has, uh, has done for us. Many classes on locations, some really amazing stuff. So this one's called uh, Using Small Flashes. It's free only this week, uh, from November 6th to November 13th. You can it, it streams continuously, so you can just kind of pop in there and, and watch it. And so if you're into Small Flash, or you're into Joe McNally, or you're into Free, or you're into With, this would be a good time to uh, go to KelbyTraining.com/onair and uh, go check out his class. All right, let's get on some more critiques where we don't have a lot of time left, so we're going to have to kind of go through. Let's just, I'm going to zip through these, and, and you can just, because I want to get to some more, Joe, I'm going to kind of go through them, and rather than picking them apart one by one, let's just give us the overall, okay. you know. So, uh, unless there's a particular one you say, hey, let's look at, but here we go, there's, there's one, two. Overall impressions? 
pretty strong. I mean, the lighting is simple and clean, which is what it should be. I mean, there's minor things I might change. Compositionally, I think this photograph feels a little awkward to me, the way she's leaning on the fence post, etc. There's nothing wrong with the light, little natural backlight in the hair and the, and the arm, a pleasing light up front. It just feels kind of, if this is maybe a senior portrait, kind of like, yep, here's me, here's my post. Um, you know, What's, that, How's this post helping them, the photo? Not that much. Uh, you know, I might work a little tighter, maybe put her back into the fence post or something like that, which might be a little hard because that's barbed Let's wire there. Rid but, of that post, uh, you know, that helps. And yeah, yeah, just simplify, simplify, simplify. I think, it, you know, if you distill down, this little girl is totally sweet, you know, oh, yeah. um, totally sweet. You're, you're lighting the foreground a little too much. Down here? Yeah, I mean, the, the light, a dead bang giveaway of where your light is coming from is if you bleed light onto the ground, this actually becomes the brightest thing in your photograph. So all of that needs to kind of go away. I don't think that blue rope is helping you either, you know, and the fact that she's stretching her arms all the way behind her. I'd like to see both her arms, you know, other than that, you know, that better uh, that, or just yeah. darken that back a bit. Yeah, absolutely. How do you, how, how did you do that? It's this? a Photoshop thing. Oh, okay. It's a, nice. It's a new program. Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> and, uh, the, um, you know, overall sweet kid, nice light just again details but god is in the details right you know it, your photograph's going to fall down or rise on the details love the subtlety of this that is that's you know free. you know it's pretty i don't think it needs much more than what you gave it there very nice all right uh joe let's take a look here okay baby it is a baby, baby. it is a baby i was hoping to get it bigger here i guess what well, this that's a baby that, that's a whoa super baby <laughs> sorry okay Let's just kind of go. I'm gonna have to back off, but I want everybody to see these kind of big at first, and they they are bigger than my frame here. But this was the size I was given, so I had to zoom in. All right, so let's zoom out so you can see the whole image here. Okay. I want to zoom out. There we go. All right, so just overall, here's the uh, <laughs> lighting wise. What are we what are we thinking? A little, a little brash, a little poppy. I mean, uh, overall, I think, again, pretty strong. I mean, this is... this is Describe yeah. brash and poppy. Well, look at this photograph. You know, it feels like um, the light could use a little more subtlety. It looks like it might be kind of a, a smaller source or maybe a silver-skinned umbrella or something like that. It feels a little neutral and a little harsh. If you ramp this up by maybe putting a diffuser in between that light source and the couple, I think it would be kinder to them. The gentleman, her, her hands and the gentleman's shirt are becoming very bright relative to their face. Right. You can gradate light, you know, you can put a little cutter or something like that in between the source and your subject and naturally kind of gradate the light that... that Oops, uh, the other way. Oh. Yeah. So that I'm not I'm not finding competition again in that busy shirt that's getting a lot of light, you know, and the branches in the background, not super helpful. Uh, I mean, uh, using out of focus tree branches and stuff is a time honored, you know, uh, approach. Lots of I do it. Everybody does it, you know, but these kind of look a little scraggly. Lots of leaves are off them and it kind of looks like tentacles going into their head. So I try to maybe drop them <laughs> down and see if uh, see if I could get that sky clean. Yeah. Maybe there's another area you could bring it to. This is just funny, you know. I kind of really sort of love this. I mean, you know, I love the, the the synchronicity of the color and whatever's in her in her hair, and then the cropped. I guess that's a heart on her shirt. Maybe keep that in because there is a play in the color. Right. You know. Uh, simple and clean. Looks like the same light treatment as the other couple. Kind of uh, poppy, pop, brash. little, little bright, little, little brassy. You know, maybe that's the best, uh, best description. Uh, cute. I mean, the cupcake is way in the foreground and way out of focus. Uh, this guy looks like a tiny little chairman of the board, though. It's kind of <laughs> like it's kind of funny. And nice lighting job on this. You know, the the kid looks like he's kind of on a. Table uh, or a floor or something like Table that. Baby. You know, and uh, I think overall, you know, the, the good thing, the good news is the approach to subjects is very friendly. This is a yeah. friendly set of pictures. I mean, I can photograph your baby, I can photograph your sister and your brother and all that sort of stuff. People are happy. They're obviously engaged with the photographer and they're comfortable in his or her presence, which is great. I just think the light needs to be toned down and made a little more subtle. Yeah. So soft, soften the light, diffuse it more. Diffuse it. Yep. All yep. right. 
And uh, here we go, I'll just take you through these. Okay. All right, okay. well, what overall advice would you give this photographer? Subtlety. Let, let, look at that picture, yeah. that picture, and now go back one. See the difference there? Um, there's a mood and a subtlety there. I'm not saying that this is the greatest portrait in the world, but, and every portrait, you know, has a mission. So maybe in the other portrait of the young lady, you wanted it to be bright and open, but, you know, the way she smiled at the camera sort of over, you know, her, the way, you know, it's not that kind to her. Yeah. You can see kind of a smallish catch light in her eye. Dude, you're good at this. I love the way you spin that. It's not that kind to her. Uh, well, you know, you don't, you know, I mean, this but is what a... What if the mission was to go to Lowe's and buy a, a powerful battery-powered lamp mm -hmm. and just aim it in her face? Well, then it's mission accomplished. Then, then, we're, <laughs> then we're okay, you know. But you see the light in the other one? It's off to the side. There's a moodiness. It emphasizes the gentleman's um, eye color. And color wheel theory, here we go, folks. You know, those are pretty startling blue eyes. Look at the way it resonates with the yellow shirt. You know, the colors yellow and blue, warm and cool, resonate. They vibrate, and they give the eye some enjoyment. We can't help it. It's basic color wheel theory. It happens. So, and this guy's got a pretty strong profile. You know, the way the light rotates into darkness, that line of demarcation between highlight and shadow is very clear, very defined, emphasizes the structure of his face. The thing that I don't like a little bit anyway is the way that his skin tone on his lower arm, his right arm, is really drawing, it, it, you know, it's a powerful portrait, but that arm looks very kind of weak, uh, kind of like dangling there. And I would, I would like underlight that dramatically. I would try to get rid of that. I would fact tone down the whole yellow a little bit, make it a little more subtle and a little more powerful. Maybe try to, try to brighten the eyes and maybe something up around the hair just a touch. All of this stuff, as Scott is working as magic in Photoshop as possible. Well, I don't know if I did any magic on that arm, but you know, I, I just um, pulled off some of the yellow here. Yeah. So, but there's an element of subtlety <clears throat> and the beginnings of grace here. Whereas you flip forward. Yeah. Look at this, how the softness of the light here and versus here. It's not graceful here. Yeah. It's just. What not about graceful. the light here? Just way too open, kind of flat, and I think they're too close to the background, yeah. and uh, not super flattering treatment of these people. Those glasses are rough. I sympathize on those glasses yeah. because they look like those tinted glasses. So if you had to give um, a critique overall, what, would, what, would, what do you think would help this photographer the most? I would say just, you know, find um, appropriate light to address your subjects, you know, because when you're blasting people with light or you're not doing them a service. So try to feel your way towards some measure of subtlety and some sort of pose complemented by light that imparts a certain grace to your subject. All right. Speaking of grace, we're going to whip through these. You get 60 seconds on each one. 60 seconds. Ready? Okay. And you have to give an overall thing because we're, we're, we're out of time here. All right. All right, I'm going to just show them real quick. Okay. Un, deux, trois, whatever comes after trois, and whatever comes after trois, and the number after that. Okay. All right. Um, you know, That's de nice. decent set of portraits, definitely. Uh, you know, uh, the post-processing looks, you know, like a little, a little glam, you know? Yep, which, like that. Look at her face. It's yeah, like very know, super mega soft. You know, but the, there's good command of tools here for sure. Good command of backgrounds. Could live without the chair uh, arm kind of up in that baby's, you know, uh, uh, in the back of the baby's head there, the little one. With the baby. That, you know, yeah. with the competing a little bit. Maybe if you just brought your camera angle down slightly, that mm. that arm would disappear just tiny, a tiny bit, and that would be helpful. And you would give them, what advice would you say to them? I would say keep on keeping on, you know, okay. and, just, uh, and just, you know, keep working with your tools. You've got good command of your tools. I have one subject, yeah. and it is me. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is a commission, obviously, or uh, you know, uh, a series of portraits this gentleman you know needs or wants. Not a bad subject, to be sure. I I hesitate to comment over much because obviously there's not a lot of variety here in terms of subject matter. This is just just darkness, you know. Uh, I, I you floating know, head, floating head, floating head. Uh, this, again, uh, kind of the converse of that, it's also a floating head. I see more of him. I know more about him. And this, again, we're back on the black. 
if you're going to stick with the subject and rotate him or her through a variety of situations, pick some disparate situations. Yeah. Uh, advice to them? Um, get out into the world. Uh, you know, use, use more of the world around you to put into your backgrounds. All right. This is a, looks like a Buccaneers fan. <laughs> Praying for a win. <laughs> I like this shot, this shot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, overall, I think this is a pretty nice set of pictures. Uh, nicely done. Uh, strong, hard light. This guy's very intriguing. I love, yeah. the, I love the endorment. You know, I would maybe love to have a little bit more on the shadow side of him, just a tiny bit more over there. Uh, but I think overall, the reverence of it, the strength of it, this is obviously a, you know, he's got a very powerful presence in this photograph. And the jewelry definitely helps. The wardrobe is is uh, matches the mood of the photograph, the subtlety of the light. All I think pretty strong. And uh, anything to to help this photographer along their way? Again, keep uh, keep, keep it going. I, I mean, he's working well. That's you know, I, I would love the the picture of the red haired young lady. If she's obviously having her hair blown, I would rather have it than under her neck. I would rather have it flying back so I could see her neck. Um, the gentleman with the slanting um, Sorry. Uh, light, that's a, that's a nice thing. A good observance of an existing quality of light or the creation thereof. There might yeah. be a flash out there. Could be. And good, uh, strong treatment of light inside. Overall, I, I, I think they're a nicely done set of pictures. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> That baby's got big feet. That baby's got, big, got feet. That baby's got big feet. <laughs> uh, this photographer seems to have a sense of humor. You know, there's a there's a life to this. These ladies are a hoot. You know, I, I smiled the minute I saw the photograph. So no matter Sorry. what the technical issues with the photograph might be, <laughs> he's already got me a little bit won over because it just kind of looks like it's a fun thing. And these ladies are getting really campy. Flip the ground. And uh, four people are not easy to light. Nope. You did a pretty good job there. And... This young lady, uh, I, uh, you know, I mean, the light is fine. Uh, I just don't know exactly <laughs> what to make of the photograph. All right, what would you tell this photographer? Um, wow. I mean, quick hit, you know, again, good command of tools. Um, <laughs> baby's got big feet, you know. Um, <laughs> baby got big feet. And a tree coming out of the baby's head. You know, head and all that sort of stuff. I mean, you could nitpick this stuff. But again, it looks like there's an exuberance. It looks like the photographer's having fun behind the lens and experimenting with, with different things. All good stuff. All right, Joe, this is going to be the last one. Okay. So let's take a look here. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. All right, nice job. Overall, uh, I'll let you speak to the retouching. Any, the I know retouching. that one's coming up. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, but she's she's a lovely subject and very strong treatment of light. Camera left looks like it might be the only flash in the picture. You know, the rocks and the sky, good background, all that sort of stuff. The mesh of the of the wardrobe with the blue sky, and the sky gradates, which is good. You know, you've got highlights in the background washing off the water, brightish clouds, but they fade either via post-processing or exposure, they fade at the top. So the blue tonalities at the top are not washed out, so my eye doesn't go off. You know, it kind of stays corralled. It's helped by the gesture and the fact that her fingers are sort of pointed down. My eye goes up there, but I kind of stick with it and I go back down to her face. There's a strong graphic with her other arm coming down this way. We're nice. on to the next picture. I know I get chatty about yeah, this stuff. Yeah, you can't get you know, chatty. You know, we're we're so, out of time. It's crazy. Um, it's crazy, Joe. You know, backlit, I think, with the hair a uh, little bit. You know, the. the I, I don't think it's, it, you know, the, the pose I don't think is maybe the best in the world, the way her leg and her arm make a kind of continuum there, you know, her elbow and the knee kind of kind of deal sort of makes for, a, yeah. uh, you know, like you know, sort of a, 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 a strong graphic line. But, but uh, the overall light is, is, is fine. It's nice. Overall light here is, is excellent. Nice. I might have tried to bring her arm up so it didn't crop right at the wrist, you know, maybe put it on All a right. hip or something or experimented with that. 
uh, light very nice here. I think there's, she's too close to the background and I think uh -huh. there's too much depth of field. I would love that greenery if it was more out of focus and that way I could deal with her in a little more um, in a pleasing way. This, I don't think uh, the light on the shadow side of the face is amplified enough. I think you need to curl that light around a little bit and get a little more into that uh -huh. shadowy eye and maybe a glimmer off of his hair or shoulder. All right, I just, I just want to say one thing about these. Um, is so you have Joe McNally uh, looking at these photos, and, and and his he's here to look at the light, right? He's I mean he's talking about the gesture, and he's talking about the light and the posing and the background. But when Joe looked at this set, the very first thing he said is, "I'm going to let you speak to the retouching." That lets you know how bad the retouching is. That a guy who's not even looking at the retouching sees it, and the first comment he says is like, "Look, I'm going to let you do that." So take a look. Look at her face. It's 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 just plastic. There's no there's not a single pore there. There's not I mean there's just it's just nothing there. And and when we talk about when people go well what is bad retouching? You're looking at it. That's it right there. It's it's an attractive model, lit well. All these other things. Man, are you missing an important part of this? Turning her skin to absolute plastic ain't the answer. Um, so you, you gotta you gotta back it off. I, you're probably using a plug-in or something, an automated plug-in to do it. Um, but that's it's just so far. And, and these are I think they're all nice shots. But the theme, I mean, when when Joe notices that first, you got a problem. Uh, and look look at her face versus her leg. Didn't really do a lot of retouching to the leg. Mm -hmm. That looks like more natural skin. You can almost see a little bit of uh, something. And this, where did this come from? It's just, it's almost two different skin textures on the same person. Uh, over here, it's, it's overdone, but not nearly as, this is way over the top. I mean, look at her face. It's just, it's, again, it's completely just, I don't have a pore, I don't have anything. It's just, I, I'm made of plastic. My skin does not breathe. So, your skin does not breathe. So, anyway, it, it, when unfortunately, it, it's killing the other good things that are going on. You know, Joe had some nice things to say about, about your lighting. There's a, I mean, like you said, pull them off the background, get some depth and things like that. But you, you've obviously spent a lot of time learning lighting and you have not spent any time learning retouching. So it's, it, 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 you're responsible for everything, all of it. How the, how the final image looks, you can't go, well, I know it sucks, but I didn't do the retouching. Or I know I'm not that good at retouching. Whatever it is, you, you got to get good at that because that's, uh, that's Plastic City. All right, um, somebody asked a question. Who would Joe go to for a portfolio critique? Who would you like want to look at your work and tell you, you know, lighting wise or any other wise? Um, oh Lord, there's, there's a whole array of people, you know, uh, that if I wanted like a, a check on my pulse photographically and I would go at this point to probably my old editor at Life, John Lowengard, one of the smartest picture editors I've ever, ever uh, worked for. I check things out with my, my very dear friend, Bill Douthit, who's a National Geographic editor for many years, and he's a very close friend of mine, but he has no problems taking his friend hat off and putting his <laughs> editor hat on and telling me my stuff sucks. And, you know, those are, obviously, those are editors. Those are, those are people who, you know, make a living looking at pictures. In terms of photographers, you know, uh, you know, Jay Maisel, I took his workshop, you know, three or more years ago because I wanted to have that voice, that critique in, in my head. You know, there's, there's a ton of people I would respect, you know, uh, and to take a look at my work and just have them give an honest evaluation. Okay, but Joe, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put you on the hot seat. Okay. So you, this is like what you just named is like when you're saying, I'd like my college professors to look at, at it now. Okay. Who, who, who's new on the scene? Who, who was somebody that is, is a, a very contemporary photographer that you would go, you know? Uh, contemporary, you know, younger than I am. <laughs> yeah, younger, younger than, you know. No, but I mean, you know, there, there's, there's a whole different genre of, you, you, you are mentioning people who, whom I respect tremendously. Um, and, and I think that you're, you're, you're having uh, classic photographers look at your work, which is great. They, they probably all, I know Jay's looked at your work. Mm -hmm. Those editors have probably looked at your work hundreds of times. But now you're going to get a fresh perspective, not from the old classic masters, but from somebody today. Who's out there today that you would go, man, you know, it'd be interesting to have blank look at it. 
Hmm, and see, I would think Gregory Heisler, but I kind of almost put Gregory Heisler in that same kind of well, classic, you know, though he's... Yeah, I mean, I think Greg, you know, edgier. I think, I think um, you know, Burnett, David Burnett, you know, for storytelling, but he again has been around for, uh, you know, for quite a while. The, uh, you know, the... It's hard for me because I grew up in a generation of, of photographers where, uh, you know, I naturally gravitate towards their their instincts and mm. and their opinions. There's a couple of really good younger shooters. I mean, we just mentioned Peter Hurley. Yeah. You know, in terms of if I was going to bring not a lighting critique, but just say, Peter, how am I doing with, uh, you know, uh, like a face in a place, you know, that kind of thing. You know, he would, I think he would have a really kind because he's so confident. I really respect that. He's a very confident guy behind he the is. camera. He is. And man, you really need that. You really need that. Uh, it, it's, it's an imperative thing. The... Um, the thing that I would look for, and it, the weakness that I have is I don't get enough, I don't get enough time in the street with my camera. And in terms of trying to tell stories with pictures, I would go seek out uh, like an Alex Webb of Magnum. Alex and, Webb. You know, to in color light people on the street. Uh, a contact photographer who's been around for, for a while, Delete Meta just has done beautiful work over the years. Uh, let me think of, of younger people, though. Well, the, think for just a moment. I'm going to tell our, our viewers where to go to get, enter the giveaways, because now we have a lot of people interested in the giveaways. Mm -hmm. It'll take me just a minute. Think. Okay. While I'm doing this, we'll give okay. you a story. I, I put you on the spot. I just said, hey, yeah. Joe, who would it be that's, uh, you know, 30 years old? Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, to enter the contest, go to kelbytv.com slash contest. You're going to go to The Grid. You're going to select the show. You're going to put your name in there. You're going to put your email in there. And then in the comments, you need to tell us which prize you want to win because we have a number of different prizes. The prizes, once again, are Joe's Sketching Light Book, which is wonderful. Joe's Moment It's Clicks, which is one of the most classic photography books ever written. Uh, Frank Dorhoff's brand new master, Mastering the Model Shoot. Uh, we have a full year subscription to Kelby Training Online for online photography education. And then we've got um, Joe's seminars in either L.A. or San Francisco. Or you can go to my Shoot Like a Pro Tour in New York, San Diego, or Toronto. <laughs> and just name the city. And then the other one, Matt, is in uh, Sacramento. And RC is in Calgary. So just put the city that you want to go to or the prize you want to go. We will pick the winners, and uh, good luck, everybody. One more thing before I, I turn it back over to um, We always have a Peach Pit deal of the week. Uh, Peach Pit offers our, our readers a, uh, a deal, and uh, it's usually 40% off, and apparently it is again today. So the book is the iPad for photographers. You get 40% off on the ebook, so it's normally $19.95. You get it for $11.99. Not bad. Go to peachpit.com slash KelbyTV. You're going to use the code KelbyTV, and uh, you get 40% off. So thanks to Peach Pit for being our sponsor and for offering a cool deal to our readers. Okay. Now that you've had a few moments, Joe, and that's not long to think about that. Yeah, there's there are a couple. There's a there's a really good young newspaper shooter named Todd Heisler working at the New York Times. Very good storyteller, and I'm going to butcher his first name, Marcelino. His last name is Lima. He just did a set of pictures on the soccer violence in Brazil yeah. that I, I went through just the other day, and I thought, man, this guy's got it going on, you know. And I would love to to uh, you know, to meet with him just to take a look at his work. He was, he was voted the wire service photographer of the year last year. And uh, with good reason, he just did a set of pictures in addition to the soccer story that he just did. He did a set of pictures in Afghanistan last year where his digital work, it almost felt monochromatic or almost like a, like a 1950s Polaroid. His sense of color is very, very subtle. Uh, another picture editor I would go see is my dear friend Maggie Steber, who has uh, done wonderful work as a photographer and uh, contributed to the National Geographic, but was the DOP at the Miami Herald for quite a number of years. And Maggie's just a bon vivant of photography. She's Ooh. exuberant and, oh, and just has a, uh, a, a love of life and the way pictures mingle with life. I would love to get a, uh, her perspective on my work as well. 
Excellent. Well, thank you, Joe. That was very thoughtful. All right. Um, everybody, thank you guys for watching. Of course, I want to thank Joe. Joe, uh, of course, we talked about your blog earlier. They can f learn more about you by going to joemcnally.com slash blog. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, on Twitter, you're Joe, Mc Joe McNally Photo. Joe McNally Photo. Joe McNally Photo. And where else can they find you? Doing you nude know. selfies at? Well, 8x10. Uh, 8 by 10 8 by large 10 format. large format nude yeah, selfies. You know, Absolutely. It's, it's my new project. It's my new direction. Really. Well, thank you, Joe. It is always a treat to have you on the show. You're, you're so insightful. You, you, you definitely look at things through a different set of eyes, which makes us all incredibly jealous. Because when you say these things, we look at the images and we go, yeah, you know, he's right. But the problem is we don't have those thoughts while we're holding the camera in our hand. Uh, and you do. And that's, I think, the, why you make the amazing images that you do. So thanks very much for being here. Oh, thank and uh, thanks to all of our sponsors and to our crew here in the studio for helping us out. And we'll see you guys next week right here live on The Grid. Take care, everybody. Thank you. That's Joe. That's Joe right there. This week's episode of The Grid is sponsored by Impix. Shoot today, upload tonight, we ship tomorrow. On One Software, focused on photography. Peach Pit Press, publishers of technology books, ebooks, and videos for creative people. Epson, exceed your vision. Expo Imaging, rogue flash vendors for speedlight enthusiasts. Intel, the power you need for hardcore creatives. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional photography website. And B&H Photo, the professional source.